Hi everyone! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to build a simple application using the serverless framework in combination with AWS Lambda and DynamoDB. I assume that you already have an AWS account and have some basic understanding of API Gateway Lambda and DynamoDB. And in this tutorial I'm focusing on how to use the serverless framework, which I'm currently using in the most recent version 0.4.2. If you use a newer version of the serverless framework, please keep in mind that things might have uh, changed. The main learning objective is to give you beginners of the serverless framework, which I am myself, an introduction how to get started. And for this purpose, I created this video, which shows you how to build a simple CRUD application with create, read, update, delete, and list operations using the serverless framework with AWS and Node.js. A good starting point to learn about the serverless framework is the serverless GitHub repository, where you find um, getting started and some documentation that gives you more info on how projects are structured, how templating works, and so on. One of the first things that you would like to do probably, I'm going to delete this user, is go to your AWS dashboard and open your IAM service. And over there you create a new user, calling him serverless guy. And this will generate an access key ID and secret access key ID, which I'm going to save over here because I need it later. Um, we're going to give this guy administrator access and when we create our serverless project we will give the serverless project our IAM user credentials so that it can do a couple of things on behalf of us and we need administrator access I believe because serverless creates some IAM roles on our behalf you might want to restrict these permissions later on so one of the first things that you need to do is install the serverless framework. I'm going to do this globally and I'm going to skip this step because I already have it installed. Serverless help gives you a list of all the commands or you can shorter write SLS, which will do the same. Now let's create our first project SLS, project create. And this will guide us through a couple of questions, project name, um, an S3 bucket where metadata and our Lambda code will be stored. All right, an email address for alarms. And now we need the access key ID of the user that we just created, you know, the guy with administrator access. Let's copy that over here and deploy our project in the US East 1 region. This will take one or two minutes before it is finished. Okay, serverless has created an initial project structure for us and has deployed some resources to AWS. Let's have a quick look. We have our as project JSON file with a project name, version, and some other metadata, as well as a cloud formation template which gets populated with some variables which you can find up here and this will create a CloudFormation template that is then deployed to Amazon. We also have a .env file with some metadata and our admin.env file where we have our access key and secret access key so make sure that this is git ignored so that you don't publish it into a public git repository. Furthermore, we have a basic package JSON file. Okay, so let's create a component and a Lambda function. SLS component create and we name it blog. Or we can also just say create and then we we'll type blog. And this creates our component with some initial code and next let's 
create a function. We first give the component name and then a slash. We can also add a subfolder here and then our function name. But let's keep things simple and just call our function block slash post. Okay, now we have success successfully created a function. Let's take a look at the source code. Here we have our component directory and in our component directory we have a library with some generated code that is shared by multiple or that can be shared included by multiple functions and we have one function with a function handler JS file and a function JSON file which describes um, uh, other things such as endpoints. We have a get endpoint here which we can um, deploy. But first let's write some code into our handler.js file. First we will remove some of the auto-generated code such as the comments and this. And then let us log the incoming events. Like this. And we would like to access DynamoDB. So let's add some variables here. We require the DynamoDB doc library and we'll create a Dynamo client. All right, so to make this work, we need to install the dependency DynamoDB. And this should create a node module here, DynamoDB, and also have saved it in our package JSON file. Nice. Okay, so let's define an operation in our event. We will later see how we retrieve this information through our mapping template. And we'll also pass through our table name with the event, like this. Okay, now let's start with the first operation in case we create a new record in DynamoDB. Um, we will execute a put item. give it the payload from our event. And then we'll break. Next we will create a post endpoint. Uh, so for the post HTTP post method. Um, for that purpose let's just copy the code for the get method. Where does it end? Yeah. Simply replace get with post. We don't require authorization, no API key, request parameters. Okay, now we need a request template and we can also give it a response template. In the request template we reference variable uh, 
Let's name it guy request uh, post create template. And we create a new file as templates.json where we specify what's going into this. Exactly. And we'd like to populate it with application JSON data. And here we uh, would like to have an operation. In this case, create operation. Table name. Well, let's call it blog posts. And payload. Specifies a DynamoDB item with some content or content column. And here we simply input the body of our request. Okay, let's go back to our request and the way I did it didn't work. So, like this. Okay, we have specified the content of our item, but it's missing a key. So whenever we make a post request, we'd probably like to auto-generate some key. And probably be good to have a UUID. And for that purpose, let's install node UUID. All right. We have node UUID. And now we can create a time UUID and simply pass it into the payload. And item post ID. Like this. Alright, before we can test if this actually works, we need to create a DynamoDB table. Um, as stated in our template, the name should be blog posts. And as stated here, the key, hash key should be post ID. So let's head over to our AWS console blog posts, create a blog posts table as um, primary key we use post ID. We don't need a sort key and string is just fine. We don't need so much provision throughput. Keep things cheap and create our table. Our DynamoDB table has been created with a primary partition key post ID without a sort key and we have no items in our table yet. So now I think we should be ready to deploy our function and endpoint. sls-deploy opens a little dashboard where we can select our function and the get endpoint is actually not there yet, but we can also select the post endpoint and deploy them into our dev stage in the US East 1 region. I 
Okay, this is looking good so far. The function has been deployed and now our endpoint has also been deployed. Now let's take a look at what has been deployed in AWS and we can see in our Lambda management console that we have a Lambda function and in our API gateway we can see that a post resource with a post method has been deployed. We don't use authentication in this example so this looks good. If we take a look at the integration request we can look at the mapping template and here we see uh, the stuff that we have specified in our uh, serverless template. Okay, so far so good. To try this out I'm going to use Postman. So if we go to stages, dev, then we can export our API as a Postman extension and open this with Postman. Let's go over to Postman and import the file that has just been created. All right, so here we go. We have one request, post request. We don't need authentication. So this looks all right. Here you can see the endpoint and our stage, the dev stage, and our path uh, leads to our blog post. So let's see what happens. And something is not right yet because we cannot access DynamoDB. So this is something that I forgot to do, but no problemo. We'll go over to our AWS console, to the IAM management console, and we need, uh, we have here a role that has been created by serverless, and we need to create a role policy that allows it to put items into DynamoDB. So in the US East one region, we have a table named blog posts and give this policy some name. And now let's try again. And it still doesn't work. And now it works. Cool. If we go over to our DynamoDB dashboard, we should now be able to see the new item that has been added. Yep, it has a UUID post ID and no content. Then let's make a postman request. Uh, with some content. First we need to specify the content type. Should be application JSON. And enter some content here. Um, I don't know. User. And a message. Right. Send the request and check our DynamoDB table and now we can see the content here. User markers and messages, hello world. Okay, now we can create new items, but what about reading items? Let's add case read and in this case we make a dynamo get item request and again we just pass in the payload and the context is done and then we break. Okay. 
what else do we need to do? We need some request parameters here because we need to specify the post ID. So let's add an integration request from string. And here we also need a request template, so I'm just going to copy this post read template, and we need to create a template for that. Um, again, I copy and paste post read template. Here we have a read operation, the table name is the same, and in this case we need to specify a key as payload with our post ID. And here we just pass in the params Okay, I think that should be it. Mm. Let's deploy our function. And our get endpoint. Now we have deployed the updated Lambda function and the new endpoint. Let's head over to our AWS dashboard. Uh, here you can see we now have a get method and it has a, a query string parameter post ID. So this looks good. Let's try out with Postman. I simply duplicate the post request make it a get and add our ID so to look up what the ID actually is. And now send a get request. And here we have a problem. So let's dig a bit deeper because I'm not sure what's going on here. Fortunately, we can log our Lambda requests. And here you can see that the post ID didn't get passed through because I called it ID. Yeah, makes sense. Let's try it again, and now it works. Okay, pretty cool. However, there's one thing that I don't like. Uh, it's that the DynamoDB item gets exposed in our response because it's uh, passed back through our DynamoDB client. And I would rather like to have a post here instead of an item. So what we need is a response template. And this is a bit tricky because um, I'll show you how it doesn't work. Let's add a API post read, uh, API response post read template here. And deploy our get endpoint. Now the thing is that serverless expects a, a string here and not a JSON, and not a JSON object, and it also makes a kind of sense or there's a bit of a mismatch between the templating mechanisms that serverless uses and that Amazon uses. Uh, Amazon uses Apache Velocity templates. 
So uh, we need to turn this into a string. And uh, let me do it like this. So to escape everything. which is not super nice, but it should work. So let's try again. And there's something wrong. Yep. Okay, now this endpoint has been deployed. Let's take a look at our API gateway. And let's refresh the page and take a look at our integration response. So now we have the mapping template that we want. And we can try again Postman. Send a request. And it's not exactly what I wanted. So let's change this and deploy. And try again. Now we got it. All right, that's it for now. I won't get into the details how to implement the other operations. However, I will up Load my source code to GitHub and feel free to take a look, copy and paste or send me a pull request with um, improvements of this little toy project. Um, maybe it helps other people to get started with serverless and some AWS services. There are a few topics that I would like to um, get into in future videos or extensions of this uh, tutorial code such as uh, request and response models. I would also like to add some mm, uh, support for authorization and um, how to use and test the JavaScript client that API Gateway generates. Um, you probably want to authenticate your users using AWS Cognito. I already played around a little bit with Karma and Jasmine, which I liked a lot. Maybe you have further suggestions of topics or um, test-driven development techniques or tools that would be valuable. So just drop me a line, send me some feedback, write a comment on this video. Thanks so much.